by on the road. Yes, my windshield is still a bit foggy, but that'll go away hopefully soon. Especially if I put on my blowers a bit more. Uh, a good, fun-packed day. Than being under a car for most of it. What is that one doing? What, what, what's your plan anyway? Nobody knows. Uh, we got some stuff done, you know, progress is being made. Anyway. Our country's doing wonderful things, by that I mean they're being as idiotic as ever. Two things on the agenda this time. First of all, we sort of apparently angered the Russians by doing something with airplanes. We are rather sure that it isn't, but you know, poking the bear generally isn't a good idea when your country is about the size of a pea. But you know, anyway, we'll see how that turns out. If the episode suddenly ends, it's because they dropped a nuke or something on us. Russia has nukes, right? I don't know. Probably. Um. Second part is, they have the wondrous idea to increase the legal drinking age. Now, by that they mean beer. Like, we have a few drinking ages. Like, at 18, you can drink strong liquor, but you can start drinking beer from 16. Now they have the wondrous idea to make both of those just 18. Well, let me tell you why that is a small problem, I think. The reason I think it's a bit of a small problem is because you can also start driving from 18. Now, if you're 16 and you're allowed to drink beer, you'll probably try out some beer because, you know, hey, I'll call, we can finally do it, yay, interesting. And you either like it and you keep on drinking. And you learn to deal with moderation and stuff like that. Or you dislike it and you never touch the stuff again. Either scenario, you're better off. I mean, either you already have the responsibility or you just don't drink. And then the problem becomes, hey, you're 18, congratulations, you can drive. And hey, you're 18, you can drink now too. Yeah, you see the problem there? Yeah. Um, I know in America it's like 18. Just learn to drive and 21 to drink, I think. I don't know, and I really have no reason to know. But, um, yeah. You sort of get the same thing, just in reverse order. You learn to drive, and you start learning the importance of driving before you start drinking may get into your first accident or something, you know, that kind of shakes you up that you're doing something rather dangerous. But, um, yeah, having both of those at the same age just doesn't really seem like a smart thing to do. No, it doesn't. Anyway, <clears throat> they also have some more ideas in the order of drinking. One of them being that the famous night shops will no longer be allowed to sell alcohol from 10 p.m. The sad part is the only reason you would visit a night shop at that hour is to either get booze or cigarettes. And I'm not entirely sure how much money shops here make on cigarettes because, you know, it's a fixed price, you know, got in tax and stuff, so I don't really know how much they make on that, but booze is kind of the thing they make the most profit out of. And they're going to say you. Because generally, if you visit a night shop for booze, it's because you run out of booze, and you need more booze, for whatever reason. Generally, that doesn't happen at 10 p.m. That happens at around, like, midnight or 1 p.m. or something like that. Either way, we'll see how things go. They're also naturally planning to raise the prices on alcohol because 
they need money, but they don't say it's because of money, it's to make our mindset change so we would stop drinking because it's more costly, blah, 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 they just need freaking money, period. And they're not going to go with a slight change either, 20% more. Now, that isn't fixed yet, they're going to vote on that. I hope that if our country has even the slightest grain of intelligence in our parliament, I was going to say, what the fudge were you guys thinking? No. Because it's going to have a reverse effect. They're doing it to get money. Again, they don't say it's because of money. Because, you know, you don't just go and say, we need more money, so you're going to pay more. Then again, we, the normal people, have the common sense to realize that it's just for money. <clears throat> but, you know, that aside, I suppose. Anyway, yes. So, the prices go up tremendously, 20%. You'll feel that. So, what are people going to do? First of all, they're going to go get their liquor from somewhere else. Two options. They're going to get it from a foreign country or a neighboring country. We got plenty around. We got one, two, three, four, four countries surrounding our little pea. Plenty of opportunity. You're never far away from a border here. I mean, you, it's impossible in our country to drive 300 kilometers in any given direction from any point in our country without leaving it. So getting country from abroad really isn't all that hard. Option two. They're going to start making it themselves. Apparently it's not that hard. We used to make wine ourselves as well. Not really hard. Problem with that is, you don't know what you're doing, things can blow up. Or, you know, you can get a batch of bad liquor and you go blind or whatever, if you can believe. Television. Also not a real solution, is it? But it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I guarantee it. <clears throat> Third option, people just stop drinking. Which is what they're saying they're going for. But that does mean no money. So you're not gonna get more money. You're gonna get less money. And people are gonna start doing weird stuff. Ugh. I do wonder, like I said before, is there even a grain of intelligence somewhere up there in our parliament? I mean, here's the kicker. And this is completely irrelevant to what I just said, but we had elections like, what, two or three years ago? I don't really know. I don't really care about politics, so I don't keep tabs on it. But we got to go out and go place our little dots for democracy, as they would like to call it. And somebody got top votes for prime minister. So you think the guy would become prime minister? He said, yeah, yeah, I don't want to. He was a big spokesman of the, in between quote, biggest party out there. He got voted prime minister. He said, no, no, I don't want to. So there's one point of democracy already. No. He got voted top guy and he said, no. I think if you're going into politics, you put yourself on the election list. If you win, you have to take the job. You can't just pussy out and say no. Thing of all is, we got this little thing called collaboration. Those are pretty great too. Now, the trick with those is quite simple too. We got like, what, 78 parties here, I think. You know, we got liberals and Democrats and whatever. The, Fudge thing we have here as well. Like the environmentalist party and all that fun jazz. Now, everybody's going generally for the position of prime minister. You know, get that, get the biggest party out there. Now, imagine one party getting 40%, another two getting 30. You think the one with 40 wins, right? Nope. The two parties of 30 join into a collaboration, suddenly they're the biggest. They get to pick the prime minister. 
kind of makes you wonder what the point of voting is here. I'm not completely done yet. And you know, this whole thing kind of proves why I don't really enjoy politics all too much. Because the system is flawed as fudge. Generally also though, not why I talk too much about it. And now you'll realize the reason why. I suppose it had to be done at some point, I had to go on a rant over politics. And I could, oh well, yeah. We are forced to go and vote. You do not get the option to vote, we have to go. Now granted, there are problems on both ends, right? Like, we are forced to vote, and what does that mean? People like me, who don't give a shit about what every party stands for, have to go out and vote as well, and don't know who the fudge they're voting for, because they simply do not care. We know this is, this is flawed, and our vote makes little to no point anyway. There's never, ever going to be a point where one party, by his own, gets 51%. It just won't happen. So, you know, you just vote for whoever you want to. And at the end of the line, it's up to the higher-ups to decide who's going to get the prime minister and all that other stuff. Are we traffic jam? No, but we are driving basically on a 70 mile well, kilometer an hour road. I guess it might lower the voice things a bit. Anyway, that's the problem with being forced to vote. If you don't know what you're doing, am I able to go over this guy actually? I don't know. He seems to be the only one here. The guy behind me is getting a little bit impatient. I can't blame him, but I didn't cross my mind to check it. Yeah, I can go. So yeah, there's a problem with being forced to vote. You don't know who you're... Yeah, sure, just cut me off. You're gonna get a nice close-up of my bumper, though. That's why... I'm pretty sure he doesn't care for the slightest either. I'm just gonna be a douche and go for it. Uh, anyway, then there's the way where you are allowed to go and vote, you're not forced. And there's a problem the other way. There's people who are invested in politics but also think the same thing I do. I think, eh, we don't really care too much, just to go out and vote. And then they blame the guys that did go vote and that the wrong guy got elected. Uh, I don't know. Politics. Personally, I'm kind of of the whole reasoning that if you promise to do something in your campaign, you have to do it within a year or so. Like if you're saying, we're going to lower taxes on ice cream sandwiches to just say something. Then you need to lower prices on ice cream sandwiches within a year. Otherwise, you're like cheat. You don't deserve your seat in frickin' Parliament. Now, this isn't normally about ice cream sandwiches. This is like, oh, we're gonna build that bridge, and we're gonna make sure that happens. We're gonna create jobs for that, and do this, and at the end of the line, nothing changes. All that happens is they just bit their fill their own freaking wall and say, no, oh, we're trying, we're trying, we're doing stuff, Look, nobody knows what, though, not even us. Yeah. Good lord. Our country is freaking stupid. Or at least higher ups are. But, anyway. That is going to do it for this rant on politics that I generally don't do. Hope you enjoyed it, but that is going to be it for this episode, though. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the series. Feel free to support the coming like and or something if you haven't already. And obviously, you guys, all in the next episode. Bye, everyone.